Mr. Speaker, will you please call the House to order? The House will come to order. In the absence of clergy, let us pause for a moment of silence. Visitors are invited to join the members in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. A quorum being present, the clerk will read the journal of Tuesday, January 20th. Mr. Morelli. Yes, Mr. Speaker. I move to dispense with a further reading of the journal of Tuesday, January 20th, and that the same stand approved. Without objection, so ordered. Mr. Morelli. Yes, sir. Uh, if I can have my uh, colleagues' attention, where I uh, will briefly describe our schedule for the day. Members should be aware that after any introductions, and I note that uh, there may be uh, several and uh, we do have some housekeeping, I believe. Uh, but once that's concluded, we will be adjourning. Yes, sir. Start off right. Mr. Morelli has asked us to have our seats in the back and to cease conversation so that you will have a direction for today. Proceed, Mr. Morelli. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. So uh, as I was uh, indicating after introductions and housekeeping, if there is any, we will be adjourning for the State of the State and Budget presentation, which will take place at the uh, Convention Center at 1.30. So once we are uh, done with that, sir, I would ask members to uh, move uh, along uh, with some dispatch so we can uh, be seated and be presented uh, for the Governor's message. So with that as a general outline, Mr. Speaker, uh, I note there are some introductions. Uh, now would be the appropriate time. Mr. Kusick, uh, for the purposes of an introduction. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for allowing me to interrupt the proceedings. Uh, we have some great visitors with us today uh, from Staten Island and someone who is no stranger to all of us in this, uh, uh, in this chamber. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, uh, Mr. John Demolais from, from Staten Island University Hospital, but someone that we all know. And I ask my colleagues, be cordial to him because he's trying to impress his new colleague from Staten Island University Hospital, but our good friend and former colleague, former Assemblyman Lou Tobacco is with us today also. So, Ms. Mr. <laughs> they're not booing him, they're looing him. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Speaker, uh, I would like you to extend the courtesies of the House to these two fine gentlemen from Staten Island. Thank you. Certainly, Ms. Corwin on the same subject. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's always a wonderful opportunity when uh, we start off our session with the State of the State. We have so many good friends come back to visit. And Lou Tobacco, of course, is a, a very, very good friend to our conference, one of my favorite Republicans of all time. And so please, I'd just like to join in in asking you to extend the cordialities of the House to Mr. Tobacco. Certainly. Ms. Maliotakis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also want to join in welcoming Lou Tobacco and uh, Mr. Demolais here to the chamber. Very fortunate to have the great health care facility, Staten Island University Hospital, in the heart of my district. And I thank them for all the wonderful work they're doing on behalf of the people of Staten Island and the state of New York. Thank you. Mr. Titone on the same subject. I, too, want to uh, welcome our distinguished guest uh, from Staten Island University Hospital, as well as Mr. Tobacco, back to the chamber. Thank you. Certainly. On behalf of Mr. Kusick, Ms. Corwin, Ms. Meliotakis, Mr. Tatone, the Speaker, and all the members, wait a minute, and Mr. Soretto, as he makes his way. No? Borelli. Mr. Borelli, I'm sorry. Don't stand by the man if you're not going to speak for him. <laughs> We certainly welcome both of you here to the New York State Assembly. This is uh, a significant day as we hear the state of the state, but also such a pleasure to see Mr. Tobacco back with us. You are always welcome as a former member, and you, sir, in your leading of that health care institution, we salute you and appreciate the work that you do to keep our communities healthy. Thank you so much, and please come back and see us real soon. Mr. Ramos, for the purposes of an introduction. Mr. Speaker, I rise for the purpose of an introduction. With, with us today, uh, we have a distinguished guest, 
named Miguel uh, Pereira, and he is from San Miguel, uh, El Salvador. He is the former Secretary of Youth uh, for the government under the President of um, El Salvador. And I have to note that uh, of all the Latin countries, uh, El Salvador has been one that has been so supportive of our country, and it, it is definitely noteworthy that when we were attacked in 9-11, El Salvador immediately joined the United States and was the first Latin country to send squadrons of troops to Afghanistan to defend uh, the rights of the United States. And so in that spirit, uh, I would like to introduce uh, Miguel, and he's here with the delegation. Uh, welcome him. Mr. Speaker, I ask you to uh, please give him a warm welcome and extend him all the privileges of the House. Certainly. Uh, on behalf of Mr. Ramos, the Speaker, and all the members, uh, Miguel, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. Buenos dias. We hope that you have enjoyed this trip uh, and that you will always come back and visit us, and maybe we'll get a chance to come over and visit you sometime. Thank you so very much, and we hope you appreciate this day. <laughs> Mr. Brit, a introduction. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to interrupt the proceedings today for the purposes of an introduction. Today I'm joined by a couple friends and honored guests from the great city of Utica. We have with us today the Honorable Mayor Paul Mary, Rob Paul Mary. He is with his Chief of Staff, Sonny Greco. And although he did not bring with him any Saranac beer or cannolis or Utica greens, uh, I'd still like you to offer him all the cordialities of the House, Mr. Speaker, if you would. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Certainly, on behalf of Mr. Brindisi, the Speaker, and all the members, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We appreciate your service to the public and to your community. Thank you for joining us. We hope that you will come back and see us real soon and give us your thoughts on today's representation of the budget. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Mr. Finch for an introduction. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to uh, interrupt the uh, proceedings. I would like to um, introduce uh, Timothy Kerstetter, who is uh, standing back, or will be standing back there. He's a young man that came down to um, listen to the governor's speech today. In addition to that, he uh, sits on the town board of Owasco in uh, Cayuga County. He's also accompanied by his friend, Ashley Lattimore. In addition to those two people, I also would like to introduce Jim Lanning, who I, who I believe is still here. He sits on the Skinny Atlas Village Board here. He is, he is here also to um, listen to the governor's uh, talk this afternoon. I would appreciate it if you would offer them all the privileges of the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Certainly. On behalf of Mr. Finch, the Speaker, and all the members, we extend to you the privileges of the floor. And we welcome this distinguished delegation here to Albany. We hope that today's uh, presentation will be beneficial to your communities. And we are always welcome and happy to have you. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Ms. Wormer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to interrupt the proceedings for purposes of an introduction. I'm pleased to be joined today by um, two women who are true leaders in their communities, the Honorable jo Joanne Yepsen, Mayor of the City of Saratoga Springs, and the Honorable Sarah Eidelman, Supervisor of the Town of Greenwich in Washington County. I ask that you extend to them the cordialities of the House. Certainly. On behalf of Ms. Wimmer, the Speaker, and all the members, we welcome these two distinguished public servants here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. We hope that your time here with us will be beneficial and that you will come back and visit us often. Ms. Warmer, as a new member, will love to have company over this long winter. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Mr. Goodell. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to interrupt the proceedings for the purposes of an introduction. It's uh, my pleasure to introduce to the chamber uh, Mayor A.J. Dolt, who is the mayor of the city of Dunkirk. Am I in my county. Uh, <clears throat> we are very fortunate that uh, Mayor Dorff is here with us, but also very unfortunate that he does such a great job in my county, running the city of Dunkirk. Uh, for those who 
of you uh, who are interested, we are very lucky in my county, in my opinion, that when it comes to working together, we do so often in a bipartisanship manner. The mayor is a Democrat mayor of the city of Dunkirk, where it's about two to one Democrat ratio for all of my colleagues who appreciate that. He rode up with me to provide a little bit more balance on the drive up, and he's riding back with our Republican county executive. So hopefully we'll all have a balanced perspective of the state of the state. Thank you very much for letting me interrupt to introduce Mayor A.J. Dole. Certainly, uh, on behalf of Mr. Goodell, the Speaker, and all the members, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor, and we hope that your continued service will benefit us all, even Mr. Goodell. Thank you so very much. Mr. Ortiz, for the purposes of an introduction. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, for in, uh, interrupting the uh, proceeding. Uh, in the uh, in the chamber today, we have been joined by the uh, Dupanki family. Uh, these uh, individuals are uh, Mr. Carlos and Carmen, are the parents of Sar Sargi and Amaru. Amaru is a very interesting and dynamic young man. Uh, Amaru, last year, he won about 200 participants at uh, the, uh, the Tito Puente Award for Classic Music uh, around, around the Eastern region. And he is also, they both attend my alma mater, Our Lady of Perpetual Help, uh, in Bay Ridge. And uh, I would love, uh, Mr. Speaker, for you to keep them the well welcome and also, they're going to be uh, listening to the governor's speech. And today, they also delivered a letter to our governor, uh, Andrew Cuomo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Ortiz. On behalf of Mr. Ortiz, the speaker, and all the members, we welcome this great, distinguished family here to the New York State Assembly. We commend you on those achievements that you've made. Those young people are looking mighty sharp today. We really appreciate that you're here. You have, of course, the privileges of the floor and we will welcome you back any time that you can make it back. Thank you so much. <laughs> Mr. Pachardo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to inter uh, interrupt the proceedings this afternoon. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to give a little history lesson uh, in this chamber. Uh, January 26th of this year, we will be celebrating the 202nd uh, birthday of Juan Pablo Duarte. Uh, for those who don't know, he is the founding father of, of, of Dominicans, and if anything, is sort of considered the Washington of Dominicans. Um, the contributions that uh, not only the Juan Pablo Duarte, as well as uh, the Dominicans who came before him, not only to the country, but also uh, in this country, uh, you know, wanted to push for their children to, to, to have a taste of the American dream. I myself uh, am a product of that dream, and how can you imagine a kid from the Bronx having a seat at the table um, in one of the most uh, diverse states in the nation, um, making decisions not only on behalf of Dominicans, but a diverse group of Bronx sites that I have the honor of representing. Um, it, at this time, I want to mention and recognize uh, the El Instituto Duartiano, or the Duartinian Institute, um, who have joined us here in the, assemb in the assembly chamber. Um, also, we have uh, some folks here from the Dominican Consulate as well. Uh, so uh, they are Cesar Romeo, Teresa Cuevas, Rafaela Martino, F uh, Felix Grant, uh, Ramona Terrero Santos, uh, Gregorio Malena and Nelson Pimontel. Um, Mr. Speaker, if you can uh, extend the uh, cordialities of the House um, uh, to them, we'd greatly appreciate it on behalf of 750 plus Dominicans that only live in the state of New York, but millions of Dominicans everywhere who live uh, uh, around the world. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Certainly, Mr. Linares on the same subject. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also join my colleague, um, Assemblymember Pichardo in welcoming uh, the Instituto Duartiano uh, to our chambers. I just want to add <clears throat> that Juan Pablo Duarte is the founding father of the Dominican Republic. I had the honor of introducing 
uh, legislation in the city of New York when I, in a previous life as a member of the city council, naming uh, part of an avenue uh, in the heart of my district in northern Manhattan, Juan Pablo Duarte Boulevard, uh, to highlight the contribution of Dominican Americans to this great country and in particular to the state of New York and the city. So I want to add my, um, my voice to ask you to welcome the delegation uh, from the Juan Pablo uh, the Duarte Institute uh, that are here represented. They have a long history uh, contributing uh, to highlight the contribution of Dominican Americans uh, to this great state. And I ask you to offer all the cordiality uh, of the chambers. Thank you. Certainly. Mr. Rivera on the same subject. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also join my colleague, um, Guillermo Linares, and joining in um, uh, Pichardo, our colleague, and welcoming y dándole la gran bienvenida a esta gran delegación de la Gran República Dominicana. What I just said is I join in welcoming this delegation. When Guillermo Linares said history, very quickly I want to share what he meant by history. Cesar Romero, the first one, over 40 years of history struggle in this city. Today he's the president of the Duartiano Institute. But he always, always led the struggle in our neighborhood, the city of New York, for respect, and especially for respect for an industry that this body, about two years ago, began to officially recognize delivery card industry. 33,000 men and women today are working and servicing our community thanks to the struggle led by Cesar Romero. The other young man that I want to mention, Phyllis Grant. Phyllis Grant was a young journalist in a newspaper in the city of New York, Noticia del Mundo. They're no longer around. Phyllis made so many of the issues very popular, very well known, as he photographed and, and he wrote about those struggles. Gregorio Malena, another fine leader in the community. I welcome all of you. I welcome the council. I am proud of the work that you have done on the behalf of the entire Latino community, not only in your particular community, but how we all benefit from your struggle during the last 40 years in the city of New York. So I join all of you in welcoming the Vice Council Nelson Pimentel, y que viva la República Dominicana, y que viva Duarte Sánchez y Mella. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Certainly, on behalf of Mr. Pachado, Mr. Linares, Mr. Rivera, the Speaker, and all the members, and myself, we welcome this distinguished group of Dominican uh, citizens here to our uh, chamber and to the Vice Chancellor. We are extended the privileges of the floor. We hope that you will continue the work that you do to continue to strengthen your community and in thus strengthening all of the state of New York. Thank you so very much. We are so pleased to have you. <laughs> Mr. Lopez. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, and thank you for letting me interrupt the proceedings. I have two guests with me today. I'm very pleased to have them. Uh, both are here to take in the state of the state and both are, are looking to get a first-hand um, experience in understanding how our government works and, and all the interplay between the executive and the legislative branch. So with me today, I have Steve Alstott, who's president of a statewide group uh, that deals with constitutional rights and public education. He's from Western New York. We're very pleased to have him. And also I have uh, a new staff person, uh, Amanda Krasnowski, uh, who is from Altamont, and she's a junior at SUNY Albany studying political science and hopes to go into, into pursue a legal career. So if you could, please welcome both of these fine individuals. Keep standing, guys. And uh, please welcome them to the chamber and give them all the courtesies of the house. 
Certainly, on behalf of Mr. Lopez, the Speaker, and all the members, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. We commend you on the work that you're doing and going to do to enhance our state and to keep our community strong. Thank you so very much. And I'm sure Mr. Lopez is more than pleased to have had you join him today on this significant day. Thank you so very much. Mr. Morelli. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Again, members, I want to uh, remind everyone that at 1.30 over the Convention Center, the Governor will be uh, issuing his State of the State address as well as his budget message. And I would also like to remind members that tomorrow, uh, Thursday, we will be taking up a resolution honoring the life and works of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Uh, with that, I now move that the Assembly stand adjourned until Thursday, January 22nd at 10.45 a.m., tomorrow being a session day. On Mr. Morelli's motion, the House stands adjourned.